All right, 1966 to 1969, Fairlane, Falcon, Torino, Comet, Montego. I think I said Fairlane, but I get lost on that because there's like five different models that this particular set of stuff will go into. Now, on this headliner install we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be talking about sedans, and we're gonna be talking about uh, hard tops. We're not gonna be talking about the sports roofs or fastbacks. Totally different installation procedure. When we get our 70 Torino in here, we will probably come back in with the guys at Auto Crafters and do a headliner setup on that. But for now, that's what we're talking about. So we have here on the hood of the car, a Acousta Shield headliner heat shield kit. I prefer to use this stuff, mostly because it has an additional layer of support for keeping that heat away from you as long as you possibly can. Uh, whenever you put this in, you have the barrier of the felt and then the final barrier of the tin on the back side of this. And all you're trying to do is to just dissipate that heat before it gets to you. So you'll have this, you'll have the headliner, and then hopefully it won't be a bajillion degrees inside the car because you'll have all these things in the way. This is a nice kit that we got from the guys at Auto Crafters. So this is going to be going in this week but I'm gonna go ahead and talk about a couple of the other things real briefly so you can see what we've got going on. I'm gonna do that right after the break. For 45 years, the Miller family and the dedicated staff at Auto Crafters have been here helping you to restore your dream Ford. Thank you for your support. Here's to another 45 years of delivering parts for your Falcon, Fairlane, F100, Galaxy, Maverick, and Pinto. All right, what I want to talk about now is your headliner installation. Now, I personally, this is just me, am not a big fan of spray contact adhesive. I would rather brush the stuff on. You can get the DAP contact adhesive like I'm showing you right now. That stuff right there will contact this thing to a surface and it's not going to let go. I find personally a lot of the spray adhesives for headliner installation and all that kind of stuff they really don't work the way I want them to work. I would like for them to be sticky stuck whenever they're stuck, and most of the times they don't. This may work fine. I'm going to continue to work the way I've always worked because I know what works for me. If you want to try this and it works for you, that's great. I'm just telling you what I do. Let's stop it right there. So I'm going to pull this out of the way. And I'm going to talk about the rest of the stuff in this kit. The one thing I will absolutely say about the Acousta Shield kits, they are very complete. Um, well, like I said, down to even giving you the adhesive to work with it, if you so choose to work with that. They've got uh, the tape that you can tape the edges of your headliner up with. They've got this, which is dampener that you can put across the roof of the, of the uh, car to sound deaden the car even further beyond what you're going to get with this stuff. Because basically this, while it does dampen sound a good bit, is really more about controlling your heat coming into the car through that roof. This stuff will actually go in and dampen the sound of the roof. You'll not have a real clunky, almost a Ford truck tin can sound when you shut the door. So that's this stuff. These panels are already cut. They'll fit in on the car nicely, so you don't have to worry about jacking with any of that when you're putting the car together. And nicely, if you are a person who likes to read, <laughs> or can follow pictures. It comes with instructions. What's not to like? I mean, you get instructions with it that actually have photographs showing you how to do it. Heck, you don't even need me for this part of it, I guess. All right, before I do the bows in this, I'm going to talk about something real quick. This is something I found on this car that you will possibly find on yours. Mises are the bane of your car's existence. This is nesting from a mice that get up inside here and make a home. The bad thing is, is if they get up in there and they piss, it's, it's not good for your car. I don't know if this was just additional stuff. I don't really like having my face up in here because mice, uh, mouse poop is bad for you. I don't know if that's all. No, that's not all of it. And of course, it's just coming out in tufts. It's not coming out as one big chunk. All right, I think 
that's all of it. Nope. <laughs> it's a busy little guy. Mm. All right, I'm going to have to have something else. I'm going to put a respirator on to get the rest of this because I can't see what I'm doing without it. So I have a big full face respirator. I recommend one of these when you're doing this kind of stuff, working with fiberglass or whatever. But you're not going to be able to hear me if I try to talk because it's kind of like, you know, Darth Vader -y type stuff. I have not put this one on before. I feel like I'm in a Star Wars movie, or maybe a Star Trek episode. I'm going to try to get up in here with a flat blade screwdriver and pull this stuff around. I don't really know how much of it there is. That's not too bad. Industrious little guys! I think that's it. Yeah, I don't feel any more of it. I'll be going back in the mask in a little bit when we are doing the uh, cleanup of the roof panel in order to put the sound in there. But what I want to talk about now is the bow positions in these cars. Now one of the things I keep getting asked questions about is all the bows were in the bottom of the floor pan of the car. What do I need to do? And I will tell you right now that you could possibly be running into a problem. Now if you're working on a Ford that's a, a more popular car like a Torino or a Mustang or, or whatever, if you get the assembly manuals, if they're available for that car and the Falcon can kind of line along with the Fairlane for this era, they do have the color coding for the bows. And there are colors on this. This first bow is gold. But the problem is a lot of times that paint is not there or somebody's gone in and painted the interior of the car. It is really tough at that point to know what bow goes where. You can worry it out because typically they go from a smaller to a larger at the back. Um, and they'll mean by that the bow droop from center is greater the further you go back in the car most of the time. There's also, as you'll see, there's two hole positions here. There's one here and one here. If you're a taller guy, you can try putting the bows in one side higher up. Nobody's going to be able to notice that when you have the car done. Uh, and that'll give you a little bit more headroom on the driver's side. I typically leave them right where they're at. And what I'll also do, instead of putting marks on the body and on the bow, I will take a punch and I will punch the body like here, you can see I've already punched this one. I'll punch the body and I will mark that with a single stripe. And then of course, the second bow down here will get two punches and two stripes on down the line. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of these out since I've done the first one already. All right, now I'll also mark to the side that the bow is on. Um, so in other words, if it were in this hole, I would mark to the right side of it, but since it's in this hole, I'm going to mark to the left. And you may wonder, why am I doing dimples? Well, I've had cases where I went in and painted the car when I marked with a Sharpie marker, and I couldn't see my marks uh, with the bows out of here, so that's always a problem when you're going in and putting everything back in there. Mark them up. Going down the line. And if you're worried about the dimples in here, if you look at the inside of this, not a big deal. All those are marked. All 
All right, now I'm going to go and mark the other side for position as well. And I'm just going to put one pip next to what hole these are in. So I'll know that that's the side that it goes on. Because it can get kind of confusing putting this stuff back in here um, when you don't have them marked up. So I'm going to go mark those up off camera. And then we're going to jump back in this. And we'll already have the bows taken out next time you see my face. All right, I'm going to go back into my mask. What I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be cleaning the ceiling down with some Scotch-Brite just to get the fiberglass residue that's on there off because if you don't take most of that off your stick strips are not going to stick real well to the ceiling so that's where we're headed now all the dust that's on the mask right now that's what you're uh, avoiding getting in your face and in your lungs fiberglass <laughs> fiberglass is bad news all right before I go any further I want to do this to let you guys know just how loud this roof can be without any kind of sound deadener up in the top anything that you run across or hit it's going to bounce back up and down on the roof in here that's what the sound deadening we're about to apply is for. Now we're gonna do the strips first, and then we'll come in with the Acousta uh, Shield on top of that. And some of this will go away. All right, you're gonna need to provide yourself one of these. You can get them at the local home improvement center. This is a wallpaper seam roller. Um, we got two because these are chimsy. They're really cheap. And I don't know if Jackson with his massive hand strength is gonna make this one work. So I'm going to let Jackson get in here and be the man and, and put this stuff in and kind of give you guys a little bit of heads up on what's going on with it. Okay? Okay. Look at this. All right. I can go in and throw stuff up here? Yes. Is there like a certain amount that I have to fit in this panel and that panel? Uh, well... Not really. I would probably say we would want to start off with just doing like, I think it's three or four toward, you know, front to back. Yeah. So how many, just that close up or further back? It. That's good there. Right here? Yeah. Right. Outstanding. Do I need more persuasion? Your car. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't is know. It, is it flat? Yes. Okay, now go to the next one. You're going to put two strips in on the next section. So like, yeah, here and here. Yes. Use the center point where the light is as your center measuring area. Roughly. You don't have to be precise with it. Well, I was wondering if I needed to tuck it into here. I would tuck it in a little bit. You're not going to be able to put that in tight, though. No, this stuff is... You just worry about the rest of them. Those are on the, that outside edge that you were working with. Yeah. Near the door. Don't worry about that all right. as much. Well, they, they go all the way to the inside yeah. length. Then do that. Oy. And just put the next one that far apart? Sure. Sure, Carl. <laughs> do what you feel. <laughs> Now a little tech tip while Jackson is rollering this stuff in, if you want to save your butt a little pain, grab yourself uh, a couple of old blankets that you got laying around, or maybe even go grab uh, some moving blankets from somewhere and just stack those around inside the interior of the car. It'll make your hiney a little less sore when you're done doing this, especially if you're an old man like me and you've got that disease called no acetal. Would it be wrong to also just install the carpet before you do the headliner? No, you could do it that way, but we don't have carpet right now, yeah. so that's kind of out of the question. Yep.
yeah, according to the instructions, it looks like it's three for the front and four for the back. So like one, two, three, or does this one not count? The front one counts. The short one counts. It's one of the three. Oh, man. Three sections. I think you're fine. Well, you're good. Spacing's going to be awkward. That's okay. This is just to help with sound deadening. Okay, well then we'll center it up. I mean, hear how much quieter that is now. I'll grab what I used before. Okay. Changed pitch already. Hey, you didn't get all of this rat's nest out. Or, I'm sorry. Jeez. Had one job. Not my problem. <laughs> More your problem than mine. Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> Sometimes the paper will rip. Yeah, but it like rip like to where it separated itself in half, and so it's really, really thin. Mm -hmm. We are going from the other way. Jackson isn't wearing gloves, but I kind of recommend wearing some gloves doing <laughs> this. But Jackson likes to cut his fingers, so I guess that's where we're at with it. Yeah, sure. Throw the overage into the uh, abyss over there. Ah, no. Don't lose your roller either. Yeah, I know. It's okay, we got two of them. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You're so kind. I'm tired of you wasting time. Huh? Just tired of you wasting time. I'm not wasting time. Am I wasting time? <laughs> you are now. <laughs> you weren't before. Weirdly, that was exactly what I was thinking you would do. <laughs> Already tons quieter. Once we put the final sound deadener and heat control from the Acoustic Shield in there, it's going to be so quiet you could hear a pen drop. But it will be a ton quieter. So whether you use the supplied adhesive that comes with the kit, which is a spray adhesive, or you use what I'm going to be using, which is the Weldwood uh, DAP contact cement, you're going to want to work in a well-ventilated area. I'm not kidding about this. You will literally probably at some point have a horrible headache and you will, you know, smell colors and see sounds. So be advised to do what I'm saying on this. I'll be turning the fans on here in a second. I'm just doing this so you can hear me right now to do the things we're going to be doing. I'm in a pretty big open area. We've got the door open. We've got one of our big roll doors open. So we got pretty decent ventilation. I think we'll be okay. So, one of the first things I'm going to do when I'm putting in something like this, is I'm going to take this and I'm going to find center on my panel. I'm going to roll it over, edge to edge, top to bottom. I'm going to flip this around and mark center front and rear on this end. Bring it around to the middle. I'm going to open this side up because this is going to be the side you're looking at. This is a rough middle, but this will let you know 
where your middle section is on this. Now you can use your dome light at the back and there are two uh, ports on the sill area where the headliner is going to wrap across that you can see to kind of put this line right here that's in the front in the middle. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this back over and pour up some cement and get rolling. I'm going to bring my cement over to the headliner as well as my bucket because when I put that down, I'm going to put it on a piece of paper. I'm going to set this on the headliner and leave it on the headliner while I'm working. Huh? Yeah, man. Turn on the fan. <laughs> Pretty stinky in here right now. And I'm just going to roll this stuff on here. It's not going to look like you're doing much, but you will be. The only disadvantage I see to using the contact cement is that it smells to high heaven for about two to three weeks after application. And it is a dry set item. So in other words, it will set dry. You can let it be almost completely dry and it will, finally, it will still set. This is a lot like what they use when they're doing headliners at trim shops. Probably would work a lot better in some respects for me to do this with it in a spray gun but I don't have a spray gun that I want to sacrifice to the headliner guy. It'll be easier inside than it is on this to tell if you're getting enough adhesive down. And no, I would not normally do this on the hood of the car. I'm not that dumb. All right, I'm not gonna do the back section yet. I'm gonna go ahead and get the inside front section done, uh, just to make sure we got enough adhesive for it. <laughs> Almost a little too much on that. There is some paint on the ceiling that I put up in here on the roof for uh, purposes of keeping the rust at bay. If you aren't high after doing this, you're doing it wrong. Ooh. That's enough. And I've grabbed it along the lines of where it needs to hit the roof. And this looks like it may be a little bit long because it's going to go over the um, mm. thing there. All right, so. We're going to go from the front to the back around the perimeter. So you want to go ahead and get yours in, Jackson? Like start put, tacking my... Just put it from the front edge, run that front edge all the way down. Yeah. We want to make sure that we're in the right spot. Front edge all the way down. Is it in? Yeah, is it allowed to be on this edge over here? Yes. All right. It's going to have to be over that edge. Then yeah, I'm in. Okay. It's so shiny. All right, we're gonna need to see if we can tuck this. I don't know if it will tuck though. I'll tuck in there. I don't think it's gonna tuck. I don't think so. Mine's sitting over top. Okay. It's moving, so be careful. Yeah. Move it back in your direction a little bit. Got it. More. Move it, pick it out. All right. Move it, keep moving it. You're looking for this line right there. Oh. Right there. So 
attack the top. I'm not even going to attack it yet. I want to get it set first. And then we'll use a tool to tuck it. Because we're going to have to also work it over that center point and work it around this, around the light. So just set it in there as, be as best you can. I'm probably going to go in and cut this with a utility knife off right here along that line. I may not, but it's, it gives it a greater potential for falling. You will need to cut out for your um, dome light. You can make a cut, Jackson, starting about right there. And right there, okay. and then cut that section completely out of it, and then we'll seam tape this, which they provide with it. I get that to stick back up all the way across. Okay. There is something that I noticed on this that I hadn't noticed before, and that is that there is a, set, a uh, wider section on this. So the front of the headliner facing the front of the car is wider than the back section of, the, of this insulation. If you're looking for a center point on this, if you're looking on the outside, there is a nick but I think inside there's a this little thing that you probably can't see real well right there all right I'm gonna um this one's gonna go a little about midway so I'm gonna put it here and I think there go ahead and stick, stick that up in there all right Ooh. We're a little short on this, but I think we're fine. Go ahead and get that back. Roll it that way. Push it out that way. Sure the longer end doesn't go on this side? Yeah, because the roof line pinches at the back. Looks like it gets wider, you know? Yeah, maybe I'm wrong. We can't take it back down. No? Mm -mm. Mm. All right, I was wrong. Um, just go from the center to the outside. From the center out. I was wrong. I'm not taking this back down though. Uh, we should have gone in and flipped it around. The wider goes toward the back, the narrower toward the front. But uh, I think we're okay. And then we'll go in and do the tuck technique on this again, like we did on the other. There's a tuck tool. All right, there you go, folks. Both of us are higher than a kite in the hands of a kite person. I ventilated the area and it's still pretty sporty in here. Um, so do yourself a favor and do that. That's basically all we're gonna show you here. We got some cutoff sections to take, things that need to be moved around a little bit, um, but we're good to go on this. I'm, I'm happy with what I've got. Ain't no Falcon ever had that quiet of a roof on it. So do me a favor, folks. Be kind to each other. Love on each other. Treat each other nice. You guys have a great week, and we'll see you 
on down the road. I'm so high. My side looks better than yours. It's, okay, whatever. <laughs> it's dropping a little bit on us, but I think that's because the adhesive's not set quite right. But that'll all change too when we put the bows in. The bows will hold it up. Yeah. Right, on to the next thing.